Hi there, it's Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet here. This is uh, what, what used to be a gaming PC. It's probably about eight years old at this point, actually. And it's neared the end of its life for gaming. It's, uh, you know, a DDR2 system, like a core uh, duo system. Uh, kind of dealy, and uh, in my opinion, using this for gaming would severely limit the types of things you could do. However, using it for another purpose is a pretty cool idea, cool, pretty cool prospect here. So, what exactly have I done? Well, let's go ahead and show you the works, huh? So this is uh, an, a EVGA SLI uh, 780 graphics card or graphics card, motherboard, uh, boom, that used to, you know, be a really high-end, uh, you know, motherboard you'd use for SLI and graphics cards and what have you, but the, its limitations are pretty much limiting it to being a budget PC at this point, and a very hot and inefficient one, but it has some cool features built in, like RAID, an onboard RAID controller. So, I've loaded this thing to the gills with hard drives. And we're going to do something to make it a little bit less noisy right now. The uh, uh, chipset on these boards is very, very loud. Or, sorry, it's very hot. And I put a little extra fan on there that's very, very loud, I should say. So, this right here. Ouch! Oh, see? Immediately. Uh, I'm going to put this low noise adapter on it and hopefully make it a little less noisy because as for that you know this except for that the system was pretty uh, nice and quiet there we go oh perfect now she's spinning and not making noise you should always turn your computers off when you add fans to them or whatever but anyways so quick tour here we have one two three four five six hard drives in here I really like this case because it has cooling for the hard drives right in front of it with these little removable doors now I have pretty shit fans in here but I will be replacing them I just have some on uh, order uh, these are just like plug in the Molex but you get the idea here you can just slide the drives in really easy and then put this back on there now it's nice and quiet and uh, it's loaded to the gills with hard drives, but what did I do for a RAID? Well, I got three three terabyte drives to run in RAID 5. That provides redundancy if one of the drives fails, you simply put, you know, replace it, it'll rebuild itself, and away you go. I also just put whatever extra hard drives I had lying around in here. There's another uh, terabyte and another 500 gig, and then I have the OS running off a regular old mechanical hard drive too. So the uh, RAID is a hardware RAID controlled by this motherboard, or at least I think think it is. It's an Enforce dealy uh, back when NVIDIA did more than just graphics cards, and uh, it uh, controls it basically through, uh, you know, you can, you can do it before the BIOS, before you load it into Windows, or you can use a utility in Windows, is which, uh, exactly what I did. And uh, I'll have uh, the RAID running, so there's f uh, three three terabytes, and they equal down to six t uh, usable terabytes of space. And you fire that on a network share and you make it, uh, you know, attach it as a network drive to other computers in the household. And then what I did was actually set up backup software on this too. So it regularly grabs from network shares on my other computers, like my YouTube and, and all that. And periodically, like every night, uh, make sure the, the uh, file structures are the same. If not, it copies the extra files over and away you go. Button it back up here. As you can tell, there's it is running right now, right behind me. But there's no nothing hooked up to it as far as a display, mouse, keyboard. Because the whole idea of this is going to be to access it remotely, put this in a closet that I have just over there, and forget about it. So I want to go ahead and put this in the closet real quick, and then maybe we'll just go over some of the software I'm using and how I set this up on the network.
haven't done that in a while. So, our NAS is now located in the closet. It only has connected to it a power supply and a connection to the network. It's set up so that it will boot without any keyboards or anything attached to it, any display, which is very nice. And then we use the Google Remote Desktop service, like so, to go ahead and log in. Boom! And I've already uh, been configuring this, so it's already kind of set up, so we'll go over it a little bit here. But uh, basically, I want that to be as hands-off as possible. You could put even a UPS on it to make sure that it doesn't, you know, if there's a little brownout or something, it's not going to lose power. Uh, I might do that in the future, not too worried about it now. And then I also have the TV that's uh, in front of that closet. There is an HDMI that leaks into there, so just in case I ever have to do any troubleshooting uh, off-network, I can. But, you know, the option's there, but it's definitely not required. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it's a set it and forget it type situation, and it should just go on and, and about doing its business, and that's what I like about it. I also set up the Windows Remote Desktop service on it just in case the internet goes down, because uh, the Google one does require a connection to the internet. But I like the Google one because you can access it anywhere in the world, and as long as, you know, there's no not setting up stuff on your router, it takes care of all that stuff for you. So it's a pretty easy uh, affair. So here we are. This is the computer in question, and uh, basically, just so you can see what I've done. Um, we have uh, the RAID controller, which is actually an NVIDIA product on this thing, uh, set up with three identical drives that are all linked in RAID 5. And once you do the calculations for RAID and it uh, does parity on one of the drives, we only end up with 5.46 terabytes of space available to us. But that way, if a drive fails, we just pop another one in there, it rebuilds the RAID and so on. And if we want to later on add even more uh, drives to the RAID array, we can increase our storage capacity and it should be fairly simple to do. Uh, and this is all in Windows, but there is a utility that pops up before you uh, load into Windows that you can like F10 into to do this kind of stuff as well. I just think it's easier in Windows to show you what's going on. Uh, so I also put some uh, garbage hard drives in here, just some stuff I had lying around, a one terabyte, and a uh, 500 uh, gigabyte and that's just got uh, extra room for some personal videos and stuff some stuff that's already backed up on the cloud elsewhere but it's nice to have it in a bunch of different spots just in case you know something happens with the internet something happens with the drives I already have it on it's in another spot because I have the room available so there we go. So uh, I also set up, uh, I actually seriously just Googled what is the best sync software. I looked through the options on a couple of them. I wanted to find the one that runs the least amount of processes, the least amount of hurt on the system, seeing as this thing is just a quad core with 8 gigs of RAM, which should just be fine for this for the situation. But uh, I found this sync folders program that seems to work really well. Basically, you set up a bunch of rules that certain file folders have to uh, match. So a file on my network or a folder on my network has to have you know have all the same files as what's on the computer if it doesn't it grabs them and puts them in there and it only goes one way and once you set up a bunch of rules for a bunch of shares on your uh, you know on your computer then you can automate this by using the Windows service basically every time this program launches it checks to make sure that what's going on is right and then it'll probably actually even just stay open but then every night Windows will uh, schedule it to run this program. So it effectively every night at 2 a.m. should make sure all my files are backed up. And if I do have like some really big video files or whatever from YouTube that need backing up, then uh, it won't take up my network, you know, uh, during the day. It'll be done you know, at night all by itself. So that's pretty cool. Some other things I might do with this server now that it's up and running is run a web server off of it uh, just for my own personal purposes or an FTP service, uh, service off of it. Uh, because those are things you tend to do with stuff like this. Not that I would want to run my own website off my own household, but there is that option there. Uh, but there's a few other things I might want to run off of this. But in the end, uh, if you have a low-powered system, an old gaming computer as long as it has a RAID controller on board and a gigabit Ethernet switch and a half decent amount of RAM, Fire Windows 7 on there, you know, an older operating system that doesn't take up as many processes and uh, much of the system resources, and uh, set up a NAS like this. It's pretty cool. And let's say you have an older computer, but maybe it doesn't have RAID on board. You can always buy a RAID controller. They're fairly cheap for you know applications of only like five drives, and uh, for you know under a hundred dollars, you could get this set up in the 
the best part is you don't have to worry about what the case looks like. You might want a good power supply, but you don't have to worry about, you know, what the video card's going to be. It's basically just going to have, you know, over 4 gigs of RAM, a uh, fairly decent uh, Intel processor, we'll say, uh, you know, maybe four, 4 cores at least, and uh, have a RAID card or some access to RAID, or you could even run software RAID through Windows. That's a possibility as well. It's a whole other video, but you can set up a RAID 5 through Windows and even have, you know, varying sizes of drives and stuff like that. It's just that's very uh, hard on your computer. Like, it takes up a lot of, uh, you know, you, you actually need a little bit better of a computer to have that work fast, but it's an, it's an opportunity for you as well. I'm at Washington Joe on Instagram and Twitter. If you have any video ideas or if you want to ask questions about this, I know this wasn't like a complete build guide. It was just kind of a showing you guys what I did because as I do stuff like this, I like to kind of keep, you know, y'all in the loop or whatever. But uh, uh, if you have any questions about it, I'd love to answer them. And if you want to see like a really in depth video on how to do this, I could also do that, I guess. But uh, for now, at Watch Jimmy Doe on Instagram and Twitter, there'll be Ryzen, Threadripper, uh, new coolers are, should be here today looking at my skin watch uh, as well as uh, there's going to be a new contest very soon so it's worth hitting the subscribe button keep an eye on the channel uh, but uh, yeah you can also help me what happen uh, help me figure out what's going to happen with the Threadripper build when we hit 20,000 subscribers so there's that too so I'll see you guys in another video it's been very nice to talk to you and I will have a nice day wow.